In 2018, freedom in the world recorded the 13th consecutive year of decline in global freedom. From long-standing democracies like the United States to consolidated authoritarian regimes like North Korea, the worldwide pattern is consistent and ominous. Democracy is in retreat. Rather than succumbing to the feelings of loneliness and isolation, people are coming together to voice their opinions and opposition to this hardening of our collective empathy. They are determined not to be silenced nor retreat from the hard-fought and time-worn battles. They are calling forth the truth regarding the rights of marginalized communities. Amherst Media continues its historic mission by providing venue, equipment, and training to those who refuse to be quiet and work with other people to give life to ideals and issues that must be heard. Critical Connections and their executive director Melika Samdani host a program called Critical Conversations, which this year confronted racism head-on with programs including Dialogues Across Racial Divides, an interracial dialogue project with Dr. Paula Green and Dr. Demetria Shabazz, and the question of reparations for slavery, where Dr. Amilkar Shabazz talked about the moral and political considerations surrounding reparations. Critical Connections also hosted a community presentation by Dr. Theodore Janin and Dr. Ali Aslam discussing Writing Wrongs, the Role of Apology and Reparations for Slavery. Another organization, Bridge for Unity, made up of 18 Valley residents from diverse cultural backgrounds, traveled to Low Country, South Carolina for a weekend of dialogue and cultural exchange focused on racism and white privilege with 12 South Carolinians. Melika Simdani, also as part of her program Critical Conversations, hosted attorney Tahira Anatal Wadud and UMass professor Shaheen Pasha discussing the role of Muslim women in American politics and its impact on narratives and perceptions of Muslim women. Rabbi Ricky Kosake with Rachel Mayori and Jackie Neiman joined Melika to discuss Jewish women's concerns around allegations of anti-Semitism within the Women's March and society in general. The issue of immigration and deportation continued to dominate the news with horrific images of children being separated from their families by ICE agents. One example of resistance was Jose Bello, an immigrant in the U.S. who was arrested after reciting his poem about the treatment of immigrants. His saga was picked up by local poet and activist Magdalena Gomez, who recited Jose's poem and entitled her effort, I Too Am Jose Bello. The Jewish Community and the Interfaith Sanctuary and Solidarity Network hosted Professor Libby Garland, author of After They Closed the Gates, U.S. 1921 to 1965, to discuss lessons from history and connections to today around Jewish illegal immigration. Amherst Media completed its documentary about the building of Temple Beth Israel, captured through the testimonies of children of Holocaust survivors, featuring their stories of immigration and the positive reception they received for their new home in America. Climate change became even more prevalent in the news with catastrophic weather conditions pummeling villages, towns, and cities alike across the globe. Locally, the Amherst League of Women Voters co-sponsored Personal Change Through Climate Change, where Dr. Raymond Bradley and Jane Wynn were joined by Congressman Jim McGovern to discuss global trends of climate change and what can be done to halt them. Additionally, the Hitchcock Center hosted a workshop with state and local officials to discuss better ways of constructing efficient and environmentally friendly buildings. The question on how democracies die was dealt with head-on by Dr. Ziblatt, who focused on the sources and consequences of polarization starting with 1930s Europe and continuing to contemporary Hungary and Turkey, demonstrating how democracies die and how they can be saved. Another panel, led by Carlos Enrique Consalvi, presented historical analysis to learn from El Salvador's state violence and revolutions, making connections between past and present struggles against empiric and state violence. Amherst Media was there to record the LGBTQ flag-raising ceremony, as well as recording the 35th annual Martin Luther King Community Breakfast Ceremonies, with keynote speaker Eshu Bumpus. At Amherst A Better Chance's 50th anniversary celebration, Amherst Media unveiled a short video highlighting ABC's important work, as well as documenting the evening's historic event. Longtime Amherst political figure Stan Rosenberg joined the Amherst League of Women Voters in hosting a new show, Byline, where Stan introduced the new town council members to the community and aids in understanding the process of implementing the new form of government. Amherst Media was right there providing video recordings of those meetings, ensuring government transparency. These are only a few of the shows we proudly produce in Cablecast. You only have to look at our channels 12, 15, and 17 on local Comcast or our webpage to see our variety and depth in content.
We are determined to continue our mission, and with your help and participation, we expect to be serving the Amherst community for another 43 years, if not longer.